Hi everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing some brayered backgrounds with you guys that are super easy, but this video is part of a larger hop. This is to celebrate 3,000 subscribers for Jess and Laura's YouTube channels. I'm going to leave their channels linked down below. Make sure you go over and subscribe to them. They are great content creators. Now, the part of this hop is going to be a lot of giveaways. So make sure that you leave comments all along the hop because there's just going to be random people chosen to win those prizes from all these incredible sponsors. I will leave more information, the very detailed information, the nitty gritty down in the description box below so you don't have to sit through this throughout the entire hop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start on my projects, and for my first project, I actually didn't turn this one into a card. What I like to do with these is actually create a bunch of backgrounds, and then I might only turn a few of them into cards and save the other ones for later on down the road. For each one of my cards today, I'm working on watercolor paper. I find it holds up better under the wetness of the paint, and I work on A2 size panels, so four and a quarter by five and a half. I can die cut these, I can cut them down later on. I like to start with larger panels, cut down as I need to. I also like to work over scrap paper, and I am working on my Sweet Petunia grid paper. I don't use the grid paper anymore because I have the mouse pads in my Misties. So in order to get rid of this paper and kind of use it up, I use it as scrap paper, and I also use it to design my cards, which I'll show you in another video. I'm working with heavy body acrylic paint. I will show you later in this video how this works with your cheaper acrylic paints that you can buy from craft stores. But what I like to do is place a few strips of paint down onto a piece of plastic. I'm using some stencil material here. You can use any kind of plastic you have on hand. You can also use um, laminated paper. I use that as well. Then I take my brayer, run it through the paint. I find that two strips of paint works pretty well. If you have a larger brayer, you could go with three. And then I just mix them back and forth just by running my ink brayer through them. Once I have them good and mixed, kind of blended a little bit, I can go ahead and take that paint over to my paper. And I just keep going over and kind of layer it up. So I'll show you here again. I'm using pink and yellow now. I have cleaned off my brayer before I've gone in and done this, just so I'm not mixing blue into my yellow. And then I'll start mixing between the two colors. I like to take my brayer again and just run it through that paint and start to mix it up. I kind of shimmy it back and forth a little bit to the left and right, and that's going to start to blend those colors. These blend super easily, and you can keep going and get a more blended look, or you can stop whenever you feel comfortable for the look you're going for. Once I have it to where I want it, I'm going to take it over to my paper and start blending back and forth again, shimming it a little bit to the left and right to get that little bit of a blend going on. Now this creates some texture as well. I'll show you some close-up pictures in just a moment. That panel I actually didn't create into a card right away. I'm saving it for another card down the line. Like I said, I like to create a bunch of these while I have the supplies out and then come in later on and create cards with all these backgrounds that I've made. So my next card, I'm actually going to be using some light blue heavy body acrylic paint and some white acrylic paint. This is going to create a nice ocean background for my card. Now this one, I went in and blended heavily with this. I didn't want a completely white top. I just wanted a nice ombre look here. So I'm really, really blending these colors. I'm coming in with a darker blue. And again, if I don't have enough paint, I can always come in and add more. Whenever you get too much paint on there, that's when it's going to start to slip and slide on your brayer. You're not going to get a good result. So start with a little paint. If you need to add more, you can always add more. It's harder to take it away. Then once I have a good amount of paint on there, I'll go ahead and start bringing my brayer over and I'm really going to mix this. I want a nice blended look and there is a look at that finished background. I set this aside to dry and then I came in and added a little bit of border dyes with this. So I used some from Craft and Desert Divas. This is an ocean border dye. I used some shells, some starfish, some seahorses, and different colors of cardstock, and that's really all it took to finish this card off. I did 
did a little bit of paper piecing, nothing fancy here, but look at that texture you get with these paints. I absolutely love it. I also added a few of the little crystals. Um, these are from Buttons Galore and more. I thought they were just the perfect addition to an ocean background. A happy birthday sentiment on a flag banner completely finished this card off. These Braird backgrounds make really great backgrounds. I mean, they're perfect for creating these great scenes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with my next card as well. I'm going to go ahead and go back with my heavy body acrylic paints, and I'm using some red and some orange. I will leave all of these links down below in the description box so you can easily find what I'm using down there. Now I'm going to go ahead, once I have my two colors blended out, I'll start with my darkest towards the left side of this one. I'm going to go from darkest to lightest on this one. The last one I went from lightest to darkest, but I really wanted to start out with that red and get a good amount of it on the panel. Again, I'm going for a really blended look on this, so I'm going to shimmy back and forth quite a bit. Then I'll come in and add some yellow, and I'll mix between the orange and the yellow. I'll come in and make sure you have your brayer going the right way. You don't want to bring that in the opposite way of what you've been doing. And I'll go ahead and start blending those two together to create this gorgeous sunset background. Altogether, this takes maybe three to four minutes to create this gorgeous background, and then you just need to let it dry. Even though these are heavy body acrylic paints, they do dry relatively quickly. They don't take long at all. For this, I went back to some Craft and Desert Divas dyes. I used a uh, Desert Scene dye. I added a Just Breathe sentiment that I stamped in some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink. I added some jewels from Cat Scrappiness, and this card was done. Now, the outside of this was fairly simple, so I actually did a little stamping on the inside as well. I used the Just Breathe from a Joy Claire stamp set, and from that same stamp set, I went ahead and grabbed this sentiment as well. It's all about finding the calm and the chaos, and I stamped that on the inside of the card with the same Nocturne ink to finish it off completely. I love stamping on the inside of my cards. I have shown that in the past. I've gotten away from it, but I did want to share with you how just to use the same sentiments from the same stamp sets and create the inside of your card too. You can add a few die cuts to it. You could bring a little bit of brayering on the inside if you wanted to, and that would completely finish off the card. Now again, I'm going to go in with my ink brayer, but this time instead of heavy body acrylic paints, I'm going to use the cheaper acrylic paints that you can find at your local craft store. Now these are thinner, they are more watery, they don't have the body that the heavy body acrylic paints do, and you have to work for it a little bit more with these, but they do work. You need to layer it, you need to do a little bit more blending, but you can get a really nice look. Another thing I will mention, you get the nice texture and you don't, you don't get a shine, but it's not a flat matte look whenever you use heavy body acrylic paints. Whenever you use your acrylic paints, they have a chalky finish to them. So just be aware of that. That is something that you're going to get when you're using these cheaper acrylic paints. They work. They are beautiful. I love the way my backgrounds turned out using these, but just know that you're going to get different results. So again, you need to work with these a little bit more. So I am really going in and mixing these and layering these up. You can play around and play around and play around with these, though. These dry super quickly, so you need to move quickly if you want them to blend very well, or you need to go in and add more layers. But because they dry so quickly, you can continue to layer them. You can add more color. You can kind of cover it up, too, if you make mistakes. And you can just keep going and have fun until you get something that you like. Now these are also great to die cut down. So I like to create my A2 panels and then this one I die cut down with an oval die from Cat Scrappiness. I added a Concord 9th die cut. It's a, from the Feather die set and I just layered that up with several layers of cardstock. I added a high U stamp right down in the bottom right hand corner, added a little stenciling behind that oval. That is from the plaid fringe stencil from the Crafters Workshop. It's one of my favorites. And I added a few more jewels from Cat Scrappiness just around the card to pull it all together. I love 
the matte finish that this acrylic paint gave this card. It is so cool to look at and it just created a really nice background for that stark white feather to sit on. Now this is another one that I did not turn into a card at this time. I just have it sitting on my desk. But on this one, I used a metallic paint. Again, I'm using my cheaper acrylic paints. I'm using a navy, and I'll go in with a gold. This one I'm going to do a little bit different. I added the navy to the top and bottom, and right in between there, I'm going to add in the gold. Again, I'm going to be layering this up quite a bit, so I have this sped up quite quickly. What I thought was neat about this, though, I figured when going in and adding the gold metallic, it wouldn't have that metallic look once it dried, especially using it on watercolor paper, but it did. It's not a strong effect, but it is there, and it is noticeable, and you do have that shine, which is so cool. Again, I'm really going to work for this blend. I'm layering up that navy to get it nice and dark, and just so I don't lose that gold completely, I'm coming in and adding that in as I'm layering. I'll keep going in, keep adding layers, letting it dry a little bit in between just so I don't pull off any color. That is something that can happen if you layer up and you layer up and you don't let it dry too much in between. You can start pulling up a little bit of your color. So let it dry between your layers. These do dry fairly quickly so you don't have to wait long. I'll come in, add a few more layers of that gold just to really get that shine and I'll finish up just by blending out those edges with a little bit of navy and then that completely finished off this little panel here. But once I pick it up and show you, it still has that sheen with the gold, which is so neat. I absolutely love it. Now here's a closer look at the acrylic paint, the cheaper on the left and the heavy body on the right. The right side, you get that texture, you don't get that matte finish. You don't have to work for your blend as much. The left side though, you're at that cheaper price point and it still does a really great job. And if you want that matte look, it's a great one to go for. There's a closer look at all three finished cards. Don't forget all the really important information down in the description box below today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Continue on this hop. It's going to be a good one. Happy crafting everyone.